what's going on guys joey frowns here flex training systems and chat as always today we're going to quickly talk about the pocket what is the pocket some people you know they see a same pocket they don't know what it is they don't know where it came from so i'm gonna give you a little history lesson right and then i'm gonna talk about it and why uh why you should just apply it to your training and then i'm gonna give you an example one of my lifters who stayed in the pocket all prep me day came he pr'd everything by a billion pounds I think it was like a hundred pound PR total. Granted, it was our first meet together. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying he's going to PR by a hundred every meet, but I'll take it, right? It's usually what happens when people first get on board. Anyway, what is the pocket? So, you guys might know my friend Alberto Nunez. I think I talked about this many years ago in a video, but uh, I think we were sitting at a Denny's once and he referred to he referred to lifting in the sense of staying in the pocket like you just stay in the pocket or something like that and then i looked at him and i was like i'm gonna turn this into a powerlifting turn like i do with everything right and uh staying in the pocket so what it actually is is like if you think of a uh i know there's a musical term but if you think of football um seeing tom brady right uh the pocket is sort of the formation of uh, players around uh, the quarterback as he's trying to decide on a target, right? Um, so he has pressure coming at him. Literally, the defense is trying to sack the quarterback. And a good quarterback can stay in the pocket under pressure. So when all this shit's coming at him and all this stress is happening and there's people running routes and there's like giant 300-pound men trying to kill you, you stay in the pocket. You stay, you stay calm, cool, and collected. And you trust your linemen, you trust your targets, and you know you go through your cadence, you do your checkdowns, and then you throw the ball to your receiver. Boom, move, you know, march on the field, right? How do we relate this to a powerlifting sense? Um, staying in the pocket. Uh, I mean, one, it's like not overshooting, right? But it can apply to other things like trusting your training. Um, just trusting the process, not overdoing things, not letting your ego get in the way. Um, inexperienced quarterbacks will panic. They'll run when they're not supposed to. They'll throw interceptions. They'll just they'll get sacked. I don't know. There's a lot of different things they can do. Sometimes they get sacked. There's nothing they can do about it. But the key is you want to stay in the pocket until you know your target opens up until the right moment. Same thing with lifting. You want to stay in the pocket. You want to uh, you don't want to overshoot. You don't want to do more than you should be doing because then um, you're going to end up doing less overall if that makes sense so let's just talk about like one training session and we'll get a look at the week right so let's say you have four sets of five right and uh on that first set you end up at a rpe like nine and a half right so you overdid it if you don't lower the weight and you try to do that again you're probably not going to get the five reps right i mean you might but you're probably not going to get the five reps one you're playing with fire because you're probably going to get hurt two uh, you're probably not going to get the five reps. So now you're going to be like failing reps or potential injury, missing things. And you're going to have to lower the weight even more than you would have. Um, had you just like, okay, I like overshot a little bit on my first set. Let me drop it down and finish the, the rest of my sets and like work in a reasonable area, right? Assuming you have a pretty good workout, you don't overshoot. Stay in the RP78, whatever, just like hypothetical workout. All right, let's just hypothetical right you stay in this range right fuck it let's just do that you stay in this range um maybe in like 48 hours you have to do something like this right now assuming you stay in the pocket on these two days right you don't overshoot you trust the process right you're being patient you're not throwing the ball early you're not blowing your load early come that third day now you have this written down you might hit a pr on this day right on this three by three at nine. If you overdo it on this day, you're gonna have to dial back super hard on this day and you might not be, it might just be too much like accumulation between the first two days to even be really be productive on this day. What ends up happening is you go heavy here, this day feels like shit and then you can't even do this day and now mentally you're like going crazy, it just compounds under the things, you're like kind of trampling over yourself, you know, because you didn't stay, a pocket, stay in the pocket on the first day, because you didn't trust the process, because you weren't patient you compromised 
the final two, you know, the other days of the week, right? This could be for any lift. For deadlift, this is fucking cracked. Um, only in very specific context would I would, you know, give this give this to someone on deadlift. But you guys get what I'm saying. If you trust the process and you take what you have on the day and you don't, you know, overshoot, then you allow PRs to kind of come to you, right? You could even have this. You could even have this written down, right? Um, you can even do eights on all, RP eights on all three days, whatever. But because you're like listening to your body and you're not overdoing it, then like maybe the next week you have like, uh, I don't know, just make something up. Who's making shit up now? Right? And then you have this. Let's say this sequence of uh, six days here. If you If you overdo it on any of this or if you overdo it here, if all of this isn't in line, assuming, um, yeah, if all this isn't in line, like let's say you go ham on this day, then you just ruin this, right? All of this could have set you up for a PR, right? Coming down the road, but because you overdid it here, um, I mean, if you overshoot here and, and you adjust these two days down, you know, then, then you can like kind of get back on track, right? It's not like, oh, you, you screwed up. That's it. It's over. You're done. No, there's like a way, there's like ways around it. You got to communicate with your coach. Again, I'm kind of just like making shit up right now just to kind of explain to you. Um, but the point is you want to keep the goal day in mind and you don't want to compromise that day by throwing the ball early or throwing, you know, throwing an interception, running when you're not supposed to, doing dumb shit, right? It's not dumb. It's like you're learning, you're going through, you know, a lot of young lifters, they kind of just like have bad instincts. They just have bad instincts. They have not been groomed. A lot of times with my lifters, I feel like I have to, I have to tell them the truth. I have to, I have to. And sometimes they're not getting something. Um, so I try to be patient with them and I'll explain to them the same concept over and over and over and over and over. But I also, part of me feels bad. Like I'm not like I'm shitting on them, but I'm just like, like this person went out of the pocket and they hit a PR, but now I need to rein them back in and I need to groom them to set them up for even bigger PRs down the road, right? Let's say you overshoot this day and you don't get hurt on this day, right? Um, but then you end up getting hurt on this day, right? It started here. Like the, that injury was kind of brewing early on. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it, that, it's a possibility, right? People think triples and they think, oh, I have to go heavy. They see single and they think, oh, I have to go heavy. No, this is this four by two out of seven. You could do this for sets of five. You know what I mean? all out if you had to but we're not doing that um there's a lot of I, I don't remember the specific study but there's a lot of research going on right now showing that like sub maximal work um and just like accumulating a lot of work over time getting kind of like not super close to your all out max but like you know sort of if you think of a meter from one to ten and each workout kind of brings you up to a seven then the next workout brings you up kind of to an eight and then you're going back down to a seven and then you're going up to an eight and then you're going up to an 8.5 and then you're going back down to a 7.5 then you're going back you know what i'm saying like you're pushing you're pushing but you're not overdoing it you're not blowing your load and you're able to do more over time like i said in one workout if you send it on the first set it's going to compromise the total amount of work you're going to be able to do in that whole workout same thing with days if you have just a terrible day your mind is all over the place you're just maxing out you're super stubborn that's going to ruin the next days that you have coming up right so you want to stay in the pocket you want to trust the process you want to be patient um, and I think I'm going over the same thing over and over and over. So let's use, we're going to show Andrew here. Andrew is one of my newer lifters from, I think he's from, uh, Ireland, but he's currently residing in Australia. Um, he just competed. I want to show you his biggest singles in training. Um, these are the high, this is the highest numbers he hit in training. These are the numbers he sent me to justify what he wanted to do on the platform. Right. And then I'm going to show you what he did on meet day. Um, there is something about his taper that I feel uh, could have been a little bit better because the meet was on like, like the way his schedule lined up, I couldn't fit as many days in. I I, I didn't have to actually to keep him, um, you know, uh, basically I'm nitpicking the taper. I feel like I could have got even more out of him, um, but it was our first meet together and I didn't want to mess anything up. So I did what I did. But anyway, you guys will see. So, uh... Yeah, this is the heaviest single he took in training on his deadlift. 
this is the embodiment of the pocket, right? This is the pocket right here. He's not overdoing it. Super calm, super smooth. Absolutely, he's going to have more in the tank on me day. Now, granted, this is in training. He didn't squat the day before or the, literally that morning or bench before. So it's safe to assume that he's going to be holding a little bit more fatigue um, than what he's able to do here. So we want to hit this weight or a little bit more on the platform, right? Uh, now for squat, let me show you. This is the heaviest squat he hit. I think this is... What, 573, something like that? Because those are not big clips. Right? There you go. Boom. Nice and easy. And then bench. I think Angie's, what, 19? 19 years old? I think that's 303. I could be wrong. Anyway, we're going to come over come over now to deadlift. Like I said, we want to hit what he hit in the gym or a little bit more. We have to... We have to use that foresight, right? Sean, if you're in chat, Sean Mills, uh, you already know I talk about foresight. I talk about when you've done something enough, you kind of, you can see the future, right? You can predict the future. You already, you know, I've already done this a million times. I can kind of anticipate what's going to happen. So we put, we ended up deciding on a weight that is more than what he did in training, but not crazy amount more because I know, okay, he's going to have squatted that day. He's going to have bench that day. It's our first meet together. Um, so we want to add a little bit more than what he did. I still think he could have probably gone up a little, but I'm perfectly fine with this. He didn't do anything wrong. Uh, everything is like how it's supposed to be, right? Um, so yeah, little little bit of a little bit of like slow down towards the top, but like nothing crazy. He stayed in the pocket all prep. His his chance of getting injured is like non-existent because he never got to that point where his body was like at its absolute limit where something could could snap or whatever. Um, here he is on bench. Uh, I don't remember if this is 319 or 314, but basically he essentially hit this without the big clips um, in the gym. And here he's hitting it, you know, 12 pounds or more on me day, no problem. Um, and then his squat. His squat was, I think it was similar to this in the gym. I don't remember if he cut weight. I'd have to look back. But yeah, very simple. PRs on everything. I believe it was like a 52 kg PR total or something like that. Um, I could be wrong. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to show you one example of staying in the pocket. There's no, there's like no chance of getting hurt. I mean, obviously weird things can happen. But if something weird is going to happen, it's going to happen. Uh, but at least it's not going to happen because there was an ego. Like literally this guy would just like send me his videos and everything. Like all his numbers are just going up and like none of the, none of them are overshoots. And at 19 years old to just have that, um, just to be calm like that and to just have no ego and just like take what's there is it's, it allows us to focus on other things. Right. So really proud of you, Andrew, if you ever watch this, um, good job, but yeah. That's it, guys. I just wanted to just kind of talk about that quickly. I know a lot of people, like, you know, they don't know what it is or they think it's a joke or whatever. And it is it is like a fun meme. But at the same time, I, I truly believe that if you can embrace this concept, you are going to become a better lifter. You're going to be able to give more. You're going to be better at using RPE. You're going to learn more about yourself as a lifter. And, um, you know, it's just going to allow the PRs to come to you as opposed to... Um, you know, as opposed to like chasing PRs or trying to force something and just like better, you'll have better mentality towards training and just better mental focus because you're not going to be like, oh, like I wanted to hit something and I couldn't hit it. Like, why is that? But you literally forgot that you overshot, you know, two days ago. Right. Anyway, thank you guys so much for making it this far. Let me get a hashtag stay in the pocket in the comments down below. Oh my God, I'm done. Thank you for the follow Mason, the taco oh man. Um, yeah, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.